Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over the PSX2 and EQOA setup. We're also going to be optimizing PCSX2. This has been a highly requested video on the YouTube comments for a little while now. Let's go ahead and pull up the Return Home website. And under the EQOA projects, you can see that we have the required project files, a link to Sandstorm, and a link to EQA EMU. Going into the required project files, you will see a link to two guides on how to legally obtain the BIOS and ISO files. So quick disclaimer, we will not provide you with the BIOS or ISO files. You need to get those on your own. Preferably by getting them from a PS2 that you personally own and a copy of EQOA Frontiers that you personally own. If you don't have those copies, there are things available online, but pirating them is illegal and a form of copyright infringement. You also need to know that on the community discords, on Return Home's discord, or any project that comes out to discord, it is illegal to ask for those files or share them do not do it that out of the way let's go ahead and look at some of the stuff we're going to need we're going to need an archive extractor i'm not really going to go over this in a whole lot of depth because most people know what win zip win rar seven zip are but here's links to them if you don't have one and they are free and here are links to sandstorm and eqoemu's project file directories and you also have a link here to the emulator software that we're going to be using which is PCSX2. A couple of links to some searches and um, instructions that both of the groups give on install and a local server setup for EQOA EMU. Some instructions that they have on their site. So first things first, let's go ahead and look at the PCSX2 download site. Bringing this up, you can see that there are stable releases and nightly releases. Personally, I like to use the nightly release because I like it updated constantly, but they do warn you that it could be a little bit buggy. And I should mention that I have pre-downloaded all of the files that we're going to need and I already have my copy of my BIOS and the ISO from the disk, both of which I own. So let's go ahead and look at the PSX2 download. We're going to unzip it and we're going to go ahead and extract all the files. I personally like to do it in the C drive, so I'm going to add a new folder in there and I'm going to extract to that folder. Great, now we can close this out. Let's pull up our file explorer. We're already in our C drive and we're going to open up the files for PCSX2 that we just pulled out of the WinZip. We're gonna go ahead and launch PCSX2 and the setup wizard is going to show up. We're going to select our language. I'm going to go ahead and set mine to English. And I like to keep up with the automatic updates. Now it's going to be telling you that you need to upload your BIOS. What you can do is open the BIOS folder you can take your BIOS files that you got from your PlayStation 2, bring them in, and now you have your BIOS files. Go ahead and close this out, refresh the list, and it should be there. Now it's going to ask for your game directory. If you want to, the best way to do this is just go directly to this right here. We're going to copy this, we're going to put it in our file explorer, 
and then we're going to go back to PCSX2. What I like to do is just make a new folder in here and label it games. Here you are going to put your EQOA Frontiers ISO file. So we're going to add, we're going to go where that game folder is, we're going to select that folder, and it's going to ask if you'd like to scan the directory. Go ahead and say yes, and hit next. Controller setup, you, if you already have a controller, you can select how you want to set it up here. I currently use a PlayStation 5 controller and I will go ahead and set up a keyboard later. So we'll go over the actual mapping and all of that later. Here's my DualSense controller. This is my PlayStation controller that I just powered up. I'm just going to set it to that. We're going to go to next and we're going to click finish. Now it's going to open and give you a chance to update. So let's go ahead and just I'll click remind me later for now. And now we are going to look at some of the settings for PCSX2. We're going to try to set up some of the settings beforehand and get some of the um, video and the controller setting set up first. So first let's go here and let's go to emulation. And everything in here should be set just the way you want it except this one right here where it says enable cheats. We're going to set that to checked. Next, let's go to the graphic settings. Again, everything is usually pretty much how you want it. I like to turn apply widescreen patches and apply no interlacing patches um, just to keep myself current with uh, any of the files that I have and any of the patches that come out for the games. Next what we want to do is we're going to go to rendering and the anti-citropic filtering we're going to set that to 16. Then we're going to go over to the memory card section and we're going to create a new memory card. We're going to go ahead and use 32 megabytes and you can give it whatever name you'd like. I'm going to name this one just memory card 1. Then we're going to go ahead and set that there and you're going to right click it and click use for slot one. Now you have a memory card in memory card slot one. Next part is very important. We're going to go to the network and hard disk drive tab and we're going to enable the ethernet. And once we enable the Ethernet, we need to set the Ethernet type to sockets and the device to auto. Now that we're done setting up the Ethernet, we're going to go ahead and close this out for now. And we're going to go back to settings. Now in settings, we're going to go to controllers. And here is where you're going to map your controller. For me, I already have my PlayStation 5 controller. And here it is. What I'm going to do now is just assign all of the buttons. So I'm going to click into the up here. And then on my controller, I'm going to, on the D-pad, I'm going to press up. And you can see how it maps those correctly. Same thing down here, the left analog, you click into it and move it up. 
by default, it should pick up everything, so that's fine. If you don't have a controller and you need to use your keyboard, it is a bit more difficult playing this with a keyboard and mouse, but it is not impossible. All you're going to do is set the DualShock controller, and then here you will set how you want it to go. So I'm going to use the D-pad with my arrow keys. The left analog, I'm gonna use you know, W, A, S, D. Right analog, I will use the uh, numerical pad. Eight, four, six, and five. And then you can set the rest up however you want. It just comes down to how you want to map your own controller or your own keyboard. If you're using a different type of controller, that's fine as well. Just map it to your own preference. Now, one more thing we need to do is let's go look at the sandstorm files that we're going to need. So if we go to sandstorm site, eqoa.live, and we scroll down, we see a how-to area, we see what works and what doesn't work. This is what we're looking for right here, these patch files. What you're going to do is download those patch files. Again, I pre-downloaded everything. Here are the patch files. And you're going to navigate to that PCSX2 folder. Same one that we put the game files in. You're going to go into Cheats. And you're going to move those patch files into your Cheats folder. One thing I do suggest is, before we continue, go back to where you put your original install files. Take the one that you created, the one that started the setup wizard, right-click it, create a shortcut, and put that on your desktop. Personally, I like to just go in here and pin it to my taskbar, and then I sort it however I want it. But that way, you have a way to run ECSX2 later. Before we boot the game up, let's go ahead and enable those cheats directly on the game. So we're going to right click the game, and we're going to go to properties. And then we're going to go to Cheats, Enable Cheats, and then select this. Go ahead and close that, and we can boot the game up. And now that the game is booting up, we get that glorious loading screen. And we're going to be hit with the intro scene and the credit section after we accept the terms and conditions this is pretty normal that little graphical glitch there it's not that big of a problem next it's going to tell you that the memory card needs to be formatted that's fine go ahead and select yes it will format it for you Now it is formatted, it's checking the memory card, and now it's going to say that we need to have the actual EQA Frontiers data on the memory card. Are you ready to prepare that? Go ahead and select yes. It's going to go ahead and do that for you. Great, now that that's done, we're just going to go ahead and hit OK. And now we can click play, network setup, or options. We're going to go ahead and go into the network setup. Entering the network setup, 
we will have a few different options, but what we're going to run through is very standard. We're just going to click Add Settings, and we're going to just keep going through, just leaving everything as is should be fine just the way it is. Great. Now it's saving to your memory card. Save is complete. Do you want to test the connection? You can go ahead and test the connection. The connection is being tested. It's cancelled. That was on me. Let's go ahead and run the test. Now it's successful. We know we're hitting the Sandstorm server. Great. Let's hit back. It's going to ask us if we want to quit. Go ahead and hit quit. It's already saved everything to the memory card. And it's going to reboot the game. We're going to have to go through the um, terms of service uh, acceptance. And through the uh, intro video and the, scene, the um, credits. I know for a lot of you, just seeing the intro is bringing back a ton of nostalgia. Again, this graphical glitch isn't a big deal. So now it's going to check your memory card again. It's going to say everything's successful, and now you're going to be able to click play. Here's the setting that we just created in the network setup. And we're going to go ahead and connect with it. So now we're going to hit X, and it's going to start connecting. May take just a moment, and now it's connected. And then it's going to check the DNAS. Here we go, we're reading the game data, checking for updates. And you can view the message, and it gives you information on Sandstorm. And we're going to go ahead and select play. So now we were on the Sandstorm server. And let's go ahead and create an account. Now it's going to tell us that we're creating a new username and password. And to write it down and keep it in a safe location. Let's go ahead and just set this up real quick. I am going to be using a throwaway password and account. With an email that doesn't truly exist. It, it, it is an email, it's just used like shark lasers, so it will go away quickly. Put in five numbers there, and here I'm going to put in my email address. have an account we can go ahead and click play it's going to welcome us to the server we're going to go into a loading screen and shortly we will be playing everquest and now we're making a character and that is all there is to it.